Afro Tales Podcast is a part of the Connected Podcast Network. Chef, Chef. Yes, Grio. Don't you love how we get to share our stories and recipes? Yes, I enjoy it greatly. Do you know what makes it possible for everyone to hear us? Yes, Grio. Our voices, obviously. True, but it's also Anchor, a hosting platform that distributes the podcast to places like Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and others. Oh, yes. And isn't everything needed to make a podcast in one place? That's correct. And the best thing of all, Chef, it's free. Free, you say? Free. And all I had to do is download the Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. So, you just had to download the Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Yep. Download the Anchor app. Or go to anchor.fm and do what we're doing now. Fantastic, Grio. Simply fantastic. I know, Chef. I know. Hello and welcome. I'm Aman Mazingo, and this is the Afro Tales Podcast, a show that will explore the folklore, tales, myths, and legends of the African diaspora. Today, we head into lower Mississippi, uh, maybe even into New Orleans town, depending on which side of the river you believe this story came from. Anyway, we meet Lana, Polly, Samuel, and a good old conjuring woman. Sit back, relax, and enjoy this tale of Lana and the Catwoman. Lana and the Catwoman. Oh, you want to hear about what happened with old Lana down the street, huh? All right, I'll go ahead and tell you the story. So, pretty Polly was to marry that boy, young Samuel, from way up the road. But there was this girl named Lana, and she said Samuel belonged to her. She said Polly had tricked him and was going to get him back. That's what she said. So, she went to the conjuring woman named Catwoman. Fear her. Woman had money to burn. She had the power. Everybody knew about her and most stayed away from her. For her life depended on something all of us have, but few of us are willing to sell. Lana had got the word that Catwoman would help her. But first, Lana had to give Catwoman a suck of her blood. Catwoman, she of the albino skin. And she was what they call a hub vampire. And she fooled Lana. Said she needed the blood to make the charm against Pretty Polly most powerful. It won't be much, Lana girl, said old Catwoman. She forced her sharp teeth into Lana's neck and sucked her fill. I'm telling you what's true. Afterward, Lana went home, dragging her legs as limp as a dish rag. And Catwoman hadn't even taken some money. She told Lana to buy some food with it and fill her belly. When they lay away, that poly girl. That's what Catwoman murmured. Never did talk loud. You come back for a charm. It will bring your Samuel closer to you than a sick puppy to a warm fire. (laughs) Catwoman laughed at that. They say the sound of a laughter came off a breath that had no life. It only had death and darkness 
When Lana got home, she laid down at once and could hardly lift her head off the pillow. She was satisfied, though. Soon, pretty Polly grew sick and tired and took to bed. The rumor was that Polly would never have old bones in her body. Young Samuel, oh, he was frantic over Polly. The doctor came to look at her. He said there was nothing he could see. From then on, Samuel knew the worst. He knew that old Lana had put a spell on Polly. Samuel went to the city to find the conjure woman Lana had gone to. He would pay for a better spell than Lana's. Word about the her vampire, cat woman, was on the street. Samuel found out where she lived. She opened the door just as he was about to knock. She had on a white turban and a white gown. Her face was covered with rice powder to hide its foul smelling rot that is Samuel felt his flesh just creep said that her vampire's arms moved like birds or or bat wings opening and shutting on a warm day her nails were sheathed and unsheathed like a cat's claws she told him I know why you come here, but I want to hear you say it. Samuel said later that her her eyes, they bulged at you like shiny, wet marbles. But he told her about pretty Polly's poor state of health. The her vampire murmured, My price for saving how is a suck of your young blood? Are you willing to pay the price? You can get as much blood as you want from the slaughterhouse. He told her, I want strong and fresh from young veins. She grinned at him. It was then Samuel saw her pointed cat's teeth. She led him to her couch. He says he wasn't hypnotized. She sat down beside him, her arms on his chest. He felt her teeth break the skin on his neck and sink in. She seemed to purr then as she sucked his blood. After she drank his fill, she told him, Your girl will be... Well, by the time you get home, just remember, though, Samuel, I can spell her whenever I want. You will come back here many, many times to give me more blood. Don't you forget. Samuel barely made it home, and he found Polly sitting in a chair and eating everything in sight. Oh, wonderful. Meantime, though, Lana was beside herself. She'd heard Polly was well, and though Lana stuffed herself like a pig, she seemed to be drying up into an old hag. So she dragged herself to the Catwoman's door. She fussed at Catwoman for not taking care of her. She got sassy with the, her vampire. Why'd she get sassy with that woman? Catwoman grabbed her and shook her like a wet rag. Lana fainted. Catwoman thought she broke her neck. She lost her head. Sent for the him vampire, her friend and mate. Between them, they carried Lana to the canal to dump her. A policeman happened by to see them. The him vampire took off and no other police officer could catch that man or that vampire. They managed to hold on to Catwoman. 
she went to jail and was given no bailout. The circuit judge wasn't due for quite a while. The newspapers had all kinds of pictures of her. Just awful to see that grotesque woman. Yet the story ended just about the way you'd expect. Lana got well, but she never tried any more nonsense over Pretty Polly. Pretty Polly went courting her Samuel, baking cakes and pies with her mama, and roasting turkeys and hog. Oh. And her vampire, Catwoman, well, in the end, some say she stayed in jail so long she had no way to get blood. And died in there, of course. You know how people say it. It's foolish to mess with a poison weed. You just pull it up and throw it in the sun. And let the roots die. But others. Oh, others say. The cat woman. Oh, she went back to the bad where she come from. And good riddance. Me. Well. If you ever catch yourself down in Mississippi or in New Orleans town and you happen to see an albino skinned woman with bulgy eyes well I wouldn't recommend making her smile the end okay so I like this story and I want to confess right off the tap the very first time I read this story the very first two times I read this story, I did not realize that she was a vampire. Which is sad because I literally read the words her vampire (laughs) and him vampire (laughs) in the story and did not realize she was a vampire. I knew she was a conjuring woman. I knew that and um, if you know anything about voodoo and hoodoo uh, whether it's New Orleans or Haitian um you know you have heard of the terms conjuring woman conjuring man um and before you think conjuring men and women are not evil people um this one in this story happened to be a vampire also so that made her something different she's an exception to the rule also this is the first vampire story that i have read coming out of the african diaspora um, not saying that there aren't vampire stories in African folktale, um, but it's just the first one that I've come across where they actually called the person a vampire. Um, but I, I think it's an interesting story, a woman wanting something, going to the spirits, going to somebody that can go to the spirits, and hex a woman. And then it turn around and get hexed in return. I know people. I have talked to people that talk about hexing. And have talked to people that have advised against hexing. Because things tend to come back. And if you don't know what you're doing, especially during this time of year, where the veil is thin, you might get hurt. And Lana... Almost got hurt. Badly. And. All for a man that didn't want her. All for a person that didn't want her. We know people like that. Who do things for people. That don't have the same energy for them. that As they do. You may love that person unconditionally. But that person just doesn't have it for you. So you want to do something. Anything. To make them love you. And as you see, that could backfire. So let's not do that. Let's not go there. Understand, energy flows. And if you have the right energy for that person, they'll come to you. All you have to do is put the energy out there. I love this story. As I said, it comes from New Orleans and lower Mississippi. But the voodoo is strong. 
American voodoo is strong. I love this story. I love this time of year. I love when the veil begins to thin and the spooky things come out to play. I love it all. It's my favorite time of year. And I can't wait until next year to do this type of story again. I want to thank you guys for listening to this. I hope you enjoy listening as much as I enjoy reading. And until next time, thank you, thank you, thank you. And have a great, great day. Oh, and a happy Halloween. Sam Hain, Samhain. Fit get it, Hallow's Eve, All Saints Day, or however you happen to celebrate this time of year. Thank you again for your time. Thank you for supporting and sharing this podcast with your family and friends. You can always find Afro Tales Podcast on Anchor, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. If you want to leave me a message, or a tweet. I can be found on Twitter at AfroTales Cast, on Instagram and Facebook at AfroTales Podcast, and now on Coffee at coffee.com forward slash AfroTales Podcast, where you can financially support me for the price of one small cup of coffee. However, you support, I thank you and I appreciate it always. So until next time, have a great day. Thank you.